Hi, I'm Adam Kalp, and you're at BeachCast. In this video, we're going to talk about WSL2 with Docker getting started. So stick around, and we'll get right on that. So the previous video that I did related to WSL2 was the installation of WSL2. If you didn't see that video or if you had questions about it, I'll make sure to link it up above. So check that out. Before you go into this video, you'll want to make sure that you have WSL2 installed. Along those lines, let's check a couple things before we get too far into this. So first, let me open my browser. I've got a couple web pages already up and ready for, for this discussion. One of them is the Docker Docs site, where they have a, a lot of information around the installation and getting it up and working and all those things. So if, if I don't cover something specifically to your use case, make sure you check out the docs on Docker. So as one of the prerequisites, we want to scroll down on this page. So now I'm in the uh, install Docker desktop for Windows, and I'm going to scroll down to where we see system requirements. There are two different tabs here. One is WSL2 backend, and then there's Hyper-V uh, backend and Windows containers. Um, so we're going to look at WSL2 backend, and here you see it's, uh, they're, they're talking about Windows 10 for Home Edition or Pro. For the, for the WSL backend, you can use either. You can use Home Edition or Pro. And then, of course, we want to make sure we enable the Windows or the WSL2 features in Windows. And then also there's some hardware requirements here. 64-bit processor, uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM. Make sure the... the, the Virtualization is activated in your BIOS for your motherboard. And also you want to download and install the Linux kernel update package. Now, most of that is covered in my previous video. So again, check out that video up above uh, if, if you want to make sure that you have WSL installed first. Now, as a second item here, like I said, there were two different tabs. One is WSL2 backend, the other one is Hyper-V. And, and Hyper-V is only available if you have the Pro edition of Windows installed. So Windows Home, you have to use the WS, WSL2 uh, backend. You can't use Hyper-V with Windows Home edition. And that's fine because for me, I'm, I'm using WSL2. Now, now, to get started, we want to go to the Docker site. So if we go to Docker, this is the docs, but if we go to Docker's main site and click on getting started or get started, it brings us to the get started with Docker page and you can see the, do the Docker desktop download. That's a lot of Ds. You can see the Docker desktop download right here. And if I mouse over this, you can see there's Windows, there's Mac, uh, either the Intel chip or the Apple chip. And there's also, uh, you know, view the Linux engine. Um, now we're gonna be doing Windows. So let me go ahead and click download for Windows. And it's gonna download that. We wanna put that in my downloads folder. So I'm gonna go there and, uh, and download the executable. And that'll take just a few minutes. It's uh, 527 megabytes in size. So once that gets downloaded, then we can install. So let me go ahead and get the downloads folder open and ready. Okay, so in the downloads folder, we see we have the Docker desktop installer right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click that. And by double clicking it, it starts the installation. First, it prompts for the security warning about Doc Docker Desktop. I'm going to say yes. Go ahead and continue with the installation. And now it'll bring up the uh, install dialog. Let me bring that over here to the center. There we go. So it's downloading some additional packages. Now it's asking us, do we want to install a required Windows components for WSL2? and also asking if we want to uh, add short shortcut to the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and keep both of those checked in my case. I already have WSL2 installed, so by, by checking this box, it's going to install it in WSL2. Now, if I had already had, I do have the professional version of Windows running, and I can double check that by bringing up Inver, 
And by bringing up WinVer, we can see what edition of Windows I have, I have running here. And I do have Windows 10 Pro operating system. But if you have Home, that's okay. You, you can still uh, have WSL2 installed. Okay, so I'm gonna click OK. And it's going to go through unpacking and performing the installation for us. Okay, so that took a few minutes for it to finish the unpacking of the uh, of the application and finish the installation, but now it is finished. So I can click close and I'm gonna go ahead and close down my downloads folder and uh, get the browser out of the way. Now we notice on the desktop, I do now have the Docker desktop icon. So I wanna go ahead and execute that. So I'm gonna double click that to launch Docker desktop. Okay, so for when, you, for when you first launch, there is the obligatory uh, service agreement and changes. You may need to pay attention to that. There has been some changes recently on, on who can use it and the licenses behind that. I've already checked it out, so I'm going to go ahead and agree and accept. And now it uh, continues to launch Docker. Okay, and now it is opened up to the dashboard of Docker. And we can see uh, at the moment we have uh, Docker Engine is starting. And now that it is finished starting, uh, it comes to the get started with Docker in a few easy steps. So estimated time is about two minutes. Let's go ahead and click start. I could go ahead and skip the tutorial, but we'll go ahead and click start. And we see that it gives you some first steps of how to use Docker, uh, cloning your first repositories and so forth. I like the tutorials. They make it very handy, very easy to use. And of course, PowerShell is open up right here in the interface, uh, ready for us to use this. I'm going to go ahead and skip past that now and skip the tutorial. But if you've not used Docker before, go ahead and kick off the tutorial. It's enlightening. It's easy to use. I'm going to go ahead and skip that. Uh, we, we can see now we have no containers running. If we look at images, there are no images. We don't have any volumes. And a, a new thing that they've started recently is creating development environments. So we're going to I'll probably create a video later about that. But for right now, what I'm most interested in is, is initially using Docker. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this command that they, that they provide here. So I'm gonna click copy. So that is copied to my clipboard. Instead of doing it from the command prompt on Windows, which I could freely do, um, and it would, it would be executing the Docker uh, container building and image downloading and everything in, um, in WSL2, but instead I'm going to go ahead and do it straight from within within Ubuntu. So let me open up, oh, launch Ubuntu 2024 or 2004. So now we have that, and I can issue the commands from right within here with Docker. There we go. So Docker run hyphen D hyphen P, and that's for port 8080. It's mapping port 80 to port 80. Docker slash getting started. We'll execute that and now it will it's not able to find the image so it's going to download the image and get the getting started container all ready for us now that has finished now if i go over to the docker desktop we can see that i do now have a container and i can look at images and i do have the getting started uh, image there as well that was used to prepare the container so the containers there everything works successfully now, if I wanted to go the next step, let's say I wanted to do something like uh, Docker run hello world and kick that off. So it'll, it'll now download the hello world image and create a container from that. And we can see here that it does say hello world, hello from Docker. And it's also given some additional things and, and additional items here. This message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly. And then it tells you what it did in order to generate that message. So it's a good learning, uh, good learning tool. Now, in addition, they're also telling you a possible next step that you might want to do, such as using Docker, uh, Docker run uh, hyphen IT Ubuntu bash. I could uh, issue docker run it ubuntu bash and it's not able to find the image ubuntu so it's going to pull that down and right now it's going to pull that image down and create a container 
and then dump me to a prompt. Now you'll notice that the prompt is different here than it was up here. This is the root prompt uh, provided by the container. So if I click, if I click exit, that takes me out of the bash prompt inside the container. Now I am inside my WSL instance of Ubuntu. And uh, we can see that I've got uh, files there that I would expect to find there. Now if I click exit from there, then it brings me back to Windows. And because uh, it's, it's, it's closed out of that uh, Ubuntu prompt. Now, of course, Ubuntu is still running inside WSL uh, 2. It hasn't actually shut down, but uh, it has shut down the terminal. And we can see here throughout this process now, I've got multiple containers uh, and, and running, one for Ubuntu, I've got one for the Hello World and one for the Getting Started. And then the images, I've got multiple images here as well that were used to create those containers. In Docker Desktop, the, the latest versions that are, that are ready to work with either Hyper-V or WSL2, it knows that because it's able to keep track of everything inside the containers. And again, it's using WSL2 for that. Now, if I were to open up, open up my PowerShell, and let's take a look at, uh, if I were to do WSL2, or WSL, rather, um, and do hyphen L for list, and then verbose, I can bring up my containers, and we can see here I have Ubuntu 20.04, it is running, and then I've got Docker Desktop Data and Docker Desktop running. Notice here that there's an asterisk beside Ubuntu 20.04. By default, that's what Docker Desktop is going to use when it executes. If we look in the settings of Docker, and by going to the Docker Desktop uh, dashboard, I can click this uh, icon for settings, uh, get rid of the tips. I, I can click this for settings and I can see it starts Docker Desktop when I log in. It's telling me to use the WSL base engine. Uh, it's telling me WSL2 provides better performance than using Hyper-V backend. Now, if I look at the resources and go to WSL integration, there's where we can see that it enables integration with the default WSL distro. And again, Ubuntu had the asterisk beside it. You can see it in the background here. And uh, so that is where what it's going to use by default. If I had multiple virtual machines installed here, they would be listed here. And then I could toggle these uh, toggle switches to select which one to use versus the default if I desired. So at this point, I have WSL2 set up and working. I've now installed Docker Desktop to use WSL2 as the backend system. Docker works very well using WSL2 versus Hyper-V. However, for the pro version of Windows, you could use Hyper-V if you wanted to. If you found this video helpful, remember to like the video. It really helps as far as publicity goes. It lets other people know that the video is here and spreads the word about BeachCast. I really hope you enjoyed it and, and got something out of it. And until next time, take care and I'll see you then.